Hello guys, welcome back. So today, no, well this video is more or less going to be a, uh, I, I call it like a video worksheet, but basically it would be basically worked examples that you would find in a textbook worked through by me. So today's topic is going to be stoichiometry and what we're going to do is we're going to do a few practice problems and I'm going to go through them. So the first one, I'm going to do three practice problems today, hopefully each of which will only take about 10 minutes. The first one will focus on uh, using solids, the second one using liquids or solutions, and the last one using gases. So here's the first problem, uh, question number 19, which I've highlighted, which is solid lithium metal uh, reacts with nitrogen gas to form lithium nitride, write a balanced chemical equation, um, including states, uh, assuming excess gas and an 81 yield of the product. What mass of lithium metal would have needed? What what mass would have been needed to produce 4.72 grams of lithium nitride? Pause the video now if you want to try it, and I'll be coming back in three, two, one. All right, welcome back. So here I have a larger workspace. So let's do the first thing, which it says write a balanced chemical equation including states. So we know that L I from the reaction plus N2 yields Li3 N and this was a solid this was told as a gas and then this was a solid this is nothing more than just interpreting uh, the question and writing out a proper equation accordingly so let's balance it so 2 3 here which would give this uh, probably a, no there's two, there's two, there's one here, um, so that would be a two, and then there would be six, because two times two is six, so making sure everything balances out, six and two, yep. So this is our balanced equation. Now, let's draw out our little chart here, so before, and uh, here, because I will actually want some space to work, so we'll do before, after, that should be enough space to work here and we are told that there's a an 80% yield 80.1% if you want to be technical so and we were told that 4.72 grams was produced we want to know that and we know that 4.72 grams of this was yielded the first thing you always want to do with these problems, no matter what, is convert to moles. And how you do that obviously depends on what you have. In this case, we want we have mass, so we want to use the molar mass to convert to moles. And the molar mass of lithium nitride is, um, so getting my periodic table on my calculator, um, I get that the mass of lithium is, um, one second here, let me just pull up a periodic table. Uh, according to my table that I always have handy, it is 6.938, so 6.938 plus 3 times that plus 1 nitrogen atom, which I know the mass is 14.007, which yields a molar mass of, so plus 14.007, which yields me, according to my calculator, 38.421 grams. So the three here came from the fact that the empirical formula has three lithiums in it and the one nitrogen, that's just the mass of everything. So 38.421 grams and one mole. Remember, I'm writing my conversion factor in such a way such that the units will cancel so I have grams in the numerator. Remember, this is just over one. Um, grams in the numerator, grams in the denominator. They should cancel and yield me moles. And when I do the division, I get uh, one second. So no, 4.72 divided by the answer, which is uh, one second. I need to erase that uh, molar mass. So I need to 
Now, just to give you some more space here, I'm going to move this so here, so I get some more space. Um, and that, according to my calculator, yields me 0 0.136 moles. And but before you think, before you just think of doing your mole ratios, it's not quite as um, simple as what you think. Remember the reaction only yielded 80.1% and this is that 80.1%. So what is 100%? So if we do, so what we, we really need more. So what we're, we're gonna do is multiply by 100% over 80.1%. Since we know this is equal to 80%, if, uh, since I know this is 80%, if I just multiply by 100 over 80%, we'll get 100%, which is what we want. So 0.136 times 100 divided by 80.1, which yields me 0 0.169, no, 170 grams, which yields me 0 0.170 gram, no, not grams, moles, moles, sorry, moles of this. And now we can do the mole ratio. So we know that for every six moles lithium, we have two moles Li3n. And then similarly, we can, since they're of the same mole ratio, we know that x to 0 0.5 one seven zero is equal to the above and I'm sure this is pretty easy to do the alternative way you can do it and the way I do it is this is just really six over two times it's all you always multiply it by the ratio and the ratio is and um, you put the number of what you have over the what you want alternatively you could even again write this as the conversion factor and I think some people might actually prefer that uh, and that's more or less what that uh, step was doing. So if I was to just write here um, 0 0.170 mole Li3n and then multiply it by this conversion factor of 2 moles Li3n and 6 mole Li. If I just multiply it by that conversion factor, these will cancel, these units will cancel, and then I get, I always I get 0 0.170 times 3, which is 0 0.51 moles, so 0 0.51 moles, which when we convert that back to our molar mass, um, we get, so just multiplying by the molar mass, remember, keep your units to cancel, so moles go here and grams goes here and then the molar mass of lithium as we discussed earlier is 6.938 so 6.938 which yields us an answer of or moles so that should cancel which yields us an answer of 3.54 And that's our answer. So if you got that, good job. And we're going to move on to the next question, which first let me erase my screen. First, let me erase my screen. Select all. Delete. So that's our answer. Um, I wonder if this. All right. So here's our second equation. Um, Here's our second question, and this one involves solutions uh, rather than uh, solids. So question four states, write a balanced chemical equation, including the states for the reaction between aqueous silver one nitrate and aqueous sodium sulfate uh, to form silver one sulfate and aqueous sodium nitrate. What, max, what mass of uh, solid silver is produced when 25 mils of 0 0.125 molar uh, silver nitrate is mixed with 35 mils of sodium sulfate. Pa 
drop the question if you want to try this now and come back in three, two, one. All right. So we're back at our workspace and what I want to do. So first it says write a balanced chemical, write a balanced chemical equation, including states. So let's do that. So we are told that a G um, N O three plus um, N A two S O four yields S silver sulfate A G two S O four plus A N O three And include your states. G and include your states. So that's the balance. That's the skeleton equation. And let's quickly balance it. Uh, put it to here. And then if you put it to here, that should balance everything. And it does. So great. Now let's create a little chart before and after. There's our little chart here that I like to do. And we are told that we have, uh, and we are told that we have 25 mils of silver one nitrate at 0.125 molar concentration. So 25 mil, 0.125 molar. And we are also told that we have uh, 35 mil, one zero zero molar right now given that we have two reactants here I think the first step we want to do the first step I like to do is first determining what the limiting reagent is so let's first quickly calculate the amount of moles we have of each so we know that we have 25 mil and that the concentration of the solution we are given is 0 0.125 mole per liter, which is also, remember that molar is just moles per liter, this capital M is just moles per liter, or equivalently, equivalently we can write it as 1,000 milliliters. I just converted, uh, I just went from step one to step, I just went, I just skipped a couple of steps. I just skipped the converting the step from milliliters to liters because I live in not America and I actually work with the metric system on a daily basis. And then similarly here, we can do it 35 mils should be an M and again we can write out that same a same sort of conversion factor which yields 0 0.100 moles for every 1,000 milliliters and when I punch in the calculations I get let me run the calculations really quickly if I put it in my calculator I get that this is uh, uh, 0 0.003125 mole. And then I get for the other one is 35 minus 0 0.1 over 1,000, 0 0.0035 moles, 0 mole. Right now, um, now we need to determine what the limiting reagent is. It's pretty clear that this is the limiting reagent since they both have roughly the same amount as each other, and this one has a stoichiometric coefficient of two, and this one has a coefficient of one. However, if you aren't sure what the limiting reagent is, what I like to do is I divide uh, the amount of moles here that I have, and I divide the number of moles that I got from my uh, this part here. Let me just circle the number I'm talking about in a different color. So I divide this number here by its coefficient. And then likewise here, um, let me choose a different color to make it a little bit more clear what I'm talking about. I divide this number here by its coefficient, which is 
implied to be, I should probably have written it down, but it's one. No, not in, oh, hang on, I need to change it back. No, fuck, color one, black, which is just one, there, right? So I divide the number of moles that I got in my equation by the their stoichiometric coefficient. So if I do that, 0, 3, 1, 2, 5 divided by 2, I get that this yields, if I do, if I do that division, I get that, uh, okay, let me try and write this in a way that makes sense yields uh, 0 0.00156 and then similarly if I do the same sort of division of this like this I get that that yields the same number 0 0.00350 and the way you determine the way you determine the limiting reagent from this test is Whichever one spits out the lowest number, that's the limiting reagent. We can see here that 0 0.0156 is much lower than 0 0.0350, so therefore that's the limiting reagent as we just did, said before. Now let me erase uh, some of the stuff I just did. So now that those arrows are gone, and now that I've discussed why things are the limiting reagent, uh, we do all our mole ratios based on the limiting reagent. Um, so we want to know what mass of silver sulfate is produced when we mix it. So again, we can do our mole ratios. So um, let's see, 0 0.0031, oops, that was a really bad one. One, two, five mole of AgNO3. And I know that for every for every two mole AgNO3, I get one mole Ag2SO4. For, forgive my very bad handwriting. So when I do the math, it get I get well. I happen to get what I got. Um, I happen to get. Uh, I happen to get 0 0.00156 moles of this stuff, and since it's asked for the mass um, of the, uh, what we call the precipitate, um, we just multiply by the molar mass, so 0 0.00156 mole, mole, grams, and when I do the uh, the molar mass of that thing is one eight seven plus sulfur, which I think is thirty two point oh six six plus which when I do the math yields me. So this is, should be 203.9, which yields me about 0 0.318 grams with our rounding. 0 0.318 grams of our rounding. If we wanted to say no to the concentration of sodium uh, nitrate, what we would do is get the moles of that, which this happens to equal the moles of the limiting reagent, divided by the total volume of the two mixtures combined. So it would be 0 0.003125 since they have the same coefficient divided by um, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to liters so 0 0.035 plus 0 0.025 liters which yields a concentration of whatever but that's how you would go about say finding the concentration of some uh, product as a result of a reaction and yeah so that's that And then the last little
original part here is I'm experimenting with exploit here with this video. So I'm experimenting with exploit in this video. I want I hope it does what I want it to. Um, please leave in the comments below if it does what I want it to. Though in reality, I bet you no one is watching this for more than two minutes because um, oh uh oh I did something that I don't didn't want. Select select all. Oops. No, not a rectangle font. Yeah, just back. Yeah, that needs a cell. Oh, okay. Yep. It did something wrong. Hopefully it's on the other screen. Yeah, it's on the other screen. Go and save. Paint. Let me just relaunch paint. So lastly, our third question of the day is if I if I was smart enough to I don't know, do this beforehand. Our last question of the day was the question um question thirty two. Right. Pause the question now if you want to try and come back for the answer in three, two, one. All right. Welcome back. Um, so first, so we are already given the equation, but I'll just rewrite it here for um, the sake of ease. H3 plus CO2 yields. H two N C O N H two plus H two O and doing our little chart here before after So that's our little chart here and we are told that there is Five liters, nine ATM, at a temperature of twenty three degrees C, and we are told that the total pressure of carbon is added to give a fourteen, fourteen ATM. So we know that if the total pressure is four ATM, we know that the partial pressure of CO two is five ATM. Now. What you could theoretically do is use your ideal gas law to sort of, because again, it's under the same, uh, because again, since they're all in the same flask, this is also at five liters, and this is also at 23 degrees centigrade. Now, what you could do is you could say, all right, since everything is, um, well, not everything is a gas, but you can, um, we always first want to determine the limiting reagent. Now, we can do this actually in a bit of a clever way. You don't necessarily have to use the ideal gas law for both, both of them. You could, but remember, but remember that volume is proportional to moles. Because if we write out the ideal gas law, P V equals n R T, and rearrange such that we get a relation of n with V and n, so V is equal to R T over P times V, right? Now, since the total pressure is the same in the container, their partial pressures may be different. However, the total pressure is the same in the container. Um, we know that since that this is constant, this is constant, and this is constant, if we, I should put it in, if we double this, we have to double that. And similarly, if we have this, we have to have that. That's what proportionality means. So we can essentially with our we can essentially do our mole ratios with the volume the volumes that we are given in the question. No, not with the volumes, but I mean with the pressures in the question. Whoops. So I rearranged it wrong, but it really should just be um, you could do the same thing with volume, but I should have meant what I where I said volume, I should have said pressure. See? And since this volume is constant, we know that pressure is proportional to moles. 
So therefore, we can do our mole ratios with the pressures of each gas, the partial pressure of each gas. So using that knowledge, we can hopefully delete that. Yep. We can use that knowledge to make our lives a little bit simpler here in, t in determining the limiting reagent. 9 over 2 is 4.5 and 5 over 1 is 5. So therefore, this is the limiting reagent since 4.5 is smaller than 5, and that would be the limiting reagent. All right, that's saved us quite a bit of work considerably. We still have to use the ideal gas law at the end of the day because not everything is a gas. Um, gas, not everything is a gas. Uh, we're looking for the volume of solid. However, that does reduce our workload considerably. So we can use our ideal gas law. PV equals NR2 implies that N equals uh, PV over R2, which yields, which yields in this case, uh, I need a gas constant in terms of atmospheres. I think it was 0. Point, uh, let me scroll up. I need to find the gas constant expressed in terms of uh, atmospheric pressure. So one moment. OK, perfect. So pressure is um, 9 times 5 P times Z over 0 0.8206 times, remember to convert your temperatures to Kelvin, plus 23, which yields us 1.85 moles approximately. which yields us about 1.85 moles. Doing our mole ratios, that's 2 to 1. So again, 1.85 mole in H3. And if we write out a conversion factor for that, 2 mole in H3, 1 mole urea. That's urea. That's urea, by the way, and that yields us which yields us 0 0.926 moles of urea. And if we multiply by the molar mass, so 0 0.926 mole. And if we just multiply by the molar mass, one mole. And the molar mass of urea is I don't feel like calculating it. Molar mass urea. According to the internet, it is 60 grams, so times 60.06 grams, which yields us 55.6 grams of urea. And that's our final answer. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, there'll be more of these sort of worked examples in future videos. See you next time.